Man, I think I need a haircut. I hope uh I hope my man Alpha Male Strategies ain't watching this video because you know Alpha Male Strategies used to be on me about my hair, man. <laughs> he said the reason why I wore a lot of hats was because I I I'd be going too many weeks in between haircuts. Yeah, I, actually I, when was the last time I had a haircut? It's been at least three weeks, if not three and a half. Yeah, it's been about three, three and a half weeks since the last time I had Erica. Matter of fact, I might go get one later on the day. Just get the, uh, what you call that, taper. Had them taper the sides. I never have them take too much off the top because as you I point out before my t the top of my hair is the most thin part of my hair. Yeah, my thinnest part of my hair is is on the top, the front half of the top. That's where my hair is like kind of has thinned out over the last 5 years or so. But um But hey, at least I still got a full head of hair. A lot of motherfuckers over the age of 45 can't even, like my own brother, man. He, he always tells me, he's envious of me, man. Because my brother, he ain't got no hair other than his beard. Yeah, he got like a beard. Um, I know a lot of my male friends who are over 45 and over 50, they don't have no hair on their head. Yeah, I still got just about all my hair. Again, the only thing with my hair is that it's thinned out somewhat on the top. But on the sides and back, I might get my full hair. And the back half of the top of my hair is still real thick. Anyway, this is not a podcast about hair. Something interesting happened last night. Something interesting. Now, you know, the last few videos, I've been having these, 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 this, a lot of my commentary has centered around the guy who's arguably my harshest critic on YouTube. Excuse me. That's burp, two burps I just did. My harshest critic on YouTube. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> if I'm the Dark Knight, if you could compare me to the Dark Knight, the Grim Reaper, I, I would compare him to being the Joker or somebody. <laughs> the Grim Reaper. Now, now here, here's to his credit, though. He had, a, he had a live stream podcast that he titled Alan Roger Curry, The Final Chapter. The Final Chapter. And I found that interesting. So I listened to some of the excerpts just within the last 90 minutes to two hours. And it's interesting. He basically, I'm going to be paraphrasing some of his words, but essentially he said he's tired of talking about him. I didn't think that day would ever come. But the Grim Reaper basically said in so many words, he's tired of talking about him. He's tired of talking about him. So the purpose of his live stream last night was to air out all his Final remaining harsh criticisms, insults, and assessments of my behavior. And then he basically said, I'm going to leave Alan Roger Curry alone. I, I'm, I'm not going to bring up his name anymore. I'm not going to pick at him. I'm not going to antagonize him. I'm just going to leave him alone. That's why he called it the final chapter. Alan Roger Curry, the final chapter. Yeah, he, he said, so I respect that about him. Now, just about everything he said about me as far as criticisms, insults, assessments, it was what I expected. It was highly opinionated shit. It wasn't nothing really factual. But in his defense, the Grim Reaper, 
Here's what I always say, man. Everybody's entitled to their opinions. Everybody is. Everybody should feel like they're entitled to their opinions. Whether those opinions about other people are positive opinions or negative opinions. You know that? We live in a country that emphasizes freedom of speech. So everyone's entitled to their opinions. I don't begrudge that from uh, the Grim Reaper. Even though I, I probably disagree with at least bare minimum 50% of his opinions about a lot of shit, but he's entitled to them. And that includes me. If he has a lot of harsh criticisms, opinionated criticisms of me, of, of various aspects of my behavior as a human being, as a book author, as a dating coach, as a podcaster, he's entitled to those. He's entitled to express any opinion about me to his listening audience that he chooses to, just like I am. I'm entitled to express any opinion about him that I feel is halfway valid. So, you know, I'm not going to, you know, unlike some of my previous podcasts where I played multiple audio excerpts of his, I'm not going to do that in this video. Because since he said his video was the final chapter and him wanting to talk about me, I'm going to let things rest. He, he said what he had to say. I've said just about everything I want to say or need to say about him. And quite frankly, I don't really feel like there needs to be any other exchanges between us beyond this point. I just hope I just hope that he is a man of his word. That's all I think. That's all I hope. I hope he's a man of his word. I hope he just completely, for the rest of 2018, he stops talking about me and stops offering even more. Basically, in a nutshell, all his criticisms last night, if I had to sum it up, came down to this. He, all of his criticism, if it was boiled down to just one criticism and criti one criticism only, his main criticism of me is that Alan Roger Curry despite saying that he's a dating coach who, who wants to emphasize giving single heterosexual men dating advice, he tends to veer out of his lane a lot. That was his main criticism of me. He said Alan Roger Curry tends to get out of his lane a lot. For example, Alan Roger Curry likes to talk about, he likes to criticize and admonish black men who emphasize black female, black female fuckery. And he basically argued that's out of Alan Roger Curry's lane. None of his books talk about black female fuckery. None of his books talk about specifically black men or black women. So why is he talking about that on his YouTube channel? Why is he always getting out of his lane? Why doesn't he just stick to talking about dating advice and talking about stuff to do with the contents of his ebooks, paperbacks, and audiobooks? Well, here would be my response to that. Because other motherfuckers always trying to draw me into these other lanes, including the Grim Reaper. If you notice, for my longtime YouTube listeners and viewers, if you notice, when I first got on YouTube, what did I say in my very first YouTube podcast? What did I say? If you literally go back to my very first YouTube podcast, I specifically said, I said there's a lot of other people podcast hosts, and particularly black male podcast hosts on YouTube that I tend to listen to quite a bit, and they cover different subject matter. And I said, even though, and I'm paraphrasing some of my words, but basically I said, even though I like a lot of what a lot of other black males talk about here on YouTube, I said my purpose for being on YouTube is to talk about dating advice for single heterosexual men. Dating advice for single heterosexual men. I said, I'm not on YouTube to gossip about celebrities. I'm not on YouTube to, to gossip about other YouTube personalities. I'm not on YouTube to talk about the ills of the black community or urban community. I'm not on YouTube to talk about politics. I'm on YouTube to talk about dating advice for single heterosexual men. 
But then, as I mentioned, I think in my very last video, what I realized by no later than the middle to end of June of last year is that I was giving away a lot of premium dating advice for free. My brother pointed that out. A YouTube person by the name of BGS Ibmore pointed that out, as well as a handful of other people on YouTube pointed that out. I was giving away a lot of premium level dating advice, knowledge, wisdom, and insight for free. And I was like, oh shit, no, nah, I got to put a stop to that. So basically, here's a simple deal. If you want purely advice-driven videos from me, then you got to pay for that. You got to become a Patreon subscriber. At minimum, a $5 Patreon subscriber and a maximum of $50 Patreon subscriber man. But yeah, if you want purely advice, that's what I do for my Patreon subscribers. I give them video content that is like 95 to 99% just all about dating advice. I don't do long rambles on my Patreon videos. I don't do long, harsh rants and admonishments on my Patreon exclusive videos. I just give purely dating advice. So yeah, for those guys who, who don't like me talking to quote unquote getting out of my lane, I would say become a Patreon subscriber man. Now for my free videos, oh yeah, I will openly acknowledge, I do. I do get out of, as the Grim would call it, get out of my lane quite a bit. But again, in my partial defense, at least half the reason why I do so is because other people like to draw me into discussions and debates about shit that ain't got nothing to do with dating and relationships or nothing to do with my brand of dating advice. People always want to bring me into shit. So I say for motherfuckers, if they don't want me getting out of my lane, quit trying to <laughs> quit bringing up my motherfucking name. When you talk about shit that ain't related to my books, don't bring up my name. Don't mention my name. Period. Don't mention my name. The Grim Reaper himself said, after his podcast last night, he, he didn't want to mention my name no more. He said, he said, I'm tired. He basically said so many words. I'm tired of talking about Alan Roger Curry. I've said everything I got to say about Alan Roger Curry, and, you know, I'm going to move on to other shit. That's fine with me. Now, now he did have one request to me, though. He did have one request, and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and honor his, this request. I heard him say in an excerpt, he said, at this point, the only thing I want to hear from Alan Roger Curry, the only thing I want him to respond to, I want him to answer to, I want him to answer this million dollar question. And again, I'm going to be paraphrasing his words, but essentially he said, Alan, if I'm such a, a, a fucked up individual, if I'm this, this blatant misogynist and hater of black women, if I'm this mentally ill, emotionally unstable individual why did you allow me to promote two or more of your books for over a year and a half why my listeners want to know if I'm such this fucked up human being I'm this blatant misogynist and hater of black women and I'm this mentally ill emotionally unstable individual who needs to seek therapy why did you allow me to promote your books at minimum at least two of your books for more than a year and a half? He said, that's the, that's the only question I want you to answer. You answer that question, I'll leave you alone. I just want you to answer that question. Okay, i answer that question. It's not complicated. It's real simple. Number one, I, I pointed this out a number of times. I never asked the Grim Reaper to promote my books. That's an important fact. I never asked him to. Matter of fact, I don't think I've ever asked anybody to. Keeping it real. I can't think of anybody who has promoted my books that I specifically reached out to him and said, will you please promote my books? I rarely have ever asked people to promote my books. With the exception of if somebody's doing an interview with me. Sometimes if somebody's doing a podcast like interview with me, I'll say, please include the links to my Amazon page and, and my main website, you know, in the description section or something like that. But generally, I don't ask people to promote. So that's, that's fact number, point number one. I never asked him to promote my books. He just started doing it on his own. He just started doing it on his own. 
And it was brought to my attention by a guy named Alex, a.k.a. Don Calypso. His social media nickname is Don Calypso. His real name is Alex, A-L-I-X. He was the first one to bring it to my attention. This was around mid to late October, I want to say, of 2015. He said, hey, man, you know, the Grim Reaper, well, he didn't call him the Grim Reaper. I call, I call him the Grim Reaper, so I'm going to just stick with that nickname. But he called him by his actual name. But he said, you know, the Grim Reaper is uh, promoting the shit out of your book, the, the Possibility of Sex. And I said, really? He said, oh, yeah, man. He did like a whole episode on your book, The Possibility of Sex. So I went and listened to it. Sure enough, yeah, he did like an entire podcast episode on my book, The Possibility of Sex. He said he loved that book. He loved that book so much to the point where he actually offered to do a book signing event for that book. Oh, I, I have a clarification to make. Speaking of book signing, I have a major clarification to make. Major clarification to make. When I talked about book signing events, and this deals with the whole black men, subject of black men and black women, I've always made mention that I had, I've had at least a half a dozen black women in my life that offered to do a book signing event for Mo One, but I made the comment in, in a number of previous videos that I never had a black man offer to do a book signing event for Mo One. That's actually not true. So I, I have to say, I have to clear, offer a retraction of my own statement. I rarely do that. You rarely hear me offer retractions, but I have to offer retractions. There was a guy in Atlanta. I want to say his name is LeVar Arrington. If I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong on that name. I think his name was LeVar Arrington. He was this black entrepreneur who lived in Atlanta. And a friend of his was a big fan of my book. And I had mentioned that I was coming to Atlanta for the Black NBA Conference. The black, they have this conference for, for black men and black women who are in possession of an MBA. Now, as most people know, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't complete my MBA. I left after the first year. But I still am cool with a lot of my former classmates. And uh, they had the black MBA conference in Atlanta in 2006. It was in, yeah, it was in early October of 2006. And this guy, this friend of this guy was a fan of my book. Again, I think his name was LeVar Arrington. He offered, he was giving some social event. He said, man, I'll set you up in this corner of my social event where you can sell your books. It wasn't what I would call a traditional type of book signing because the focus wasn't strictly on me. And that's probably why I forgot about it. Because on most book signing events, the focus is literally all on me. Whereas with him, it was more so he gave like this kind of party and he had this one section of his room of the party where he had a table set up and I had my books on top of it and I ended up selling, I think, like a dozen copies of my book. So he was technically, he was the one black male who can say he did offer, he did do a book signing event for me. So that's a rare retraction from Alan Roger Gray. So I, I can't say I have a, had a black male sponsor a book signing. Again, it, it wasn't what I would call an official or a traditional type of book signing, but it was a variation of a book signing. Um, now back to the Grim Reaper. Yeah, the Grim Reaper loved my book, The Possibility of Sex, so much that he wanted to do a book signing for that book in Philadelphia. Um, so yeah. It started off with him mainly promoting just that book. He promoted the possibility of sex a hell of a lot. To a far lesser extent, he promoted Mo One. He never really talked about the full contents of Mo One. He just talked about the gist of it, which is upfront, specific, straightforward honesty. And he would chant. He would do my Mo One chant, which is Mo One. But as far as he never talked about the chapter on Mo 2 or Mo 3, Mo 4, and my other chapters in the book, he never really talked the way he did with the possibility of sex. So I wouldn't say he fully promoted Mo 1. He just would talk about the gist of that book. And then when I came out in June 2016 with my book, The Beta Man Revolution, he promoted the hell out of that book. That's the main two books he promoted mine, was The Possibility of Sex and The Beta Man Revolution. 
And again, to a far, far lesser extent, Mo won. Who said again? He, he never promoted that book at all. He never promoted Who Said Again. Not one time. He never promoted that book. Um, so getting back to the original question, why did I allow him? Well, my explanation would be it was free advertising, free marketing. <laughs> Plain and simple. It was free advertising, free marketing. At the time he was promoting my books, which was between roughly November of uh, late October of 2015, all the way up until the time we fell out, which was the first week of June of 2017, there wasn't too much he did or said that really rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, he expressed some opinions, particularly about black women that I didn't 100% agree with, but he didn't really do anything that made me say, oh, I don't know about him. I, I got to disassociate myself with him. I'm going to say this, and he'll probably agree with this. I already talked about we all have our opinions. We all have our opinions. He has his opinions about me. I have my opinions about him. I'm going to say this opinion, and I'm going to even say that other people have shared this opinion. To me, the Grim Reaper was a different podcaster back in 2015 and 2016 than he's been in 2017 and 2018. Now, I know he would deny that and debate that, but I'm just telling you my opinion. And, and again, I know other people who've co-signed with that. And interesting enough, I mentioned this guy named Alex, a.k.a. Don Calypso. Don Calypso is a close friend of the Grim Reapers. He's considered the Grim Reapers' executive producer. I'm, I'm about to throw Don Calypso under the bus because I'm sure he didn't share this. Or he might have. He might have shared this himself with the Grim Reaper, but I know he told me himself. He said the Grim Reaper is different in his podcasting style and his verbal delivery now than he was back in 2015, 2016. To the Grim Reaper's credit, when I first heard his podcast back in late 2015 and most of 2016, he had a very cool, calm, collected, matter-of-fact delivery. He had a very cool, calm, collected, matter-of-fact delivery. He was just all about refuting invalid criticisms that black women had of black men. That was his main thing. If black, if he felt like black women said things about black men that were an invalid generalization, an invalid stereotype, or just an, an, an highly invalid assessment of black men's behavior, he would present a, a counter argument to that. He would basically refute it sometimes even backed up with, with, with research data and statistics, and then he would leave it alone. You wouldn't hear, like, anger in his voice. You wouldn't hear emotion in his voice. You wouldn't hear bitterness in his voice. Again, to his credit, he was a very cool, calm, collected type of guy. And even then, not everything he said that I agree with, but at least I liked his delivery. So to partially answer the question, why did I let him promote my books? To me, he seemed like a, a level-headed guy at that time. Yeah, starting with roughly late October 2015 throughout the entire calendar year of 2016, I didn't really have any problems with the Grim Reaper. Again, I didn't agree with everything he said, but I didn't, as far as what I would call major problems, I didn't have any major problems with him. It wasn't until around the early part of 2017, before I even got on YouTube, where I began to have problems with him. Because I got on YouTube in April, at the beginning of April of 2017. I would say start with maybe February or March of 2017, that's when I slowly but surely began to have issues with, with him. Because he was starting to become, his verbal delivery was totally different. He was starting to have more anger in his voice, more antagonism in his verbal delivery. He was throwing more insults at people. He sounded more bitter and resentful and misogynistic towards black women. So I would say, yeah, it was right before I came on YouTube 
that's when I first start slowly but surely beginning to have problems, beginning to have issues with him. Yep, I sure did. Because I remember I even told my brother. And my brother right then and there, he said, he said, cut him off. He said that, I think, around like, yeah, that was around like February, March of 2017. My brother was like, cut him off. He said, if you feel, if you starting to feel uneasy, cut him off, man. Don't allow him to promote your books anymore. Cut him off. But I basically had an attitude like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him at least a few more weeks to see, you know, how things go. But yeah, that's when I was sad. My, my, my attitude towards him first changed was around, again, it was around February or March of 2017. And then I got on YouTube in April of 2017. And we fell out the first week of June when he made that comment about Elliot Roger. And he also made a comment about basically saying that he felt like being indirect with women was just as effective, if not more effective, than being direct with women. Some I'm about to touch on in the latter half of this video. Um, so yeah, that would be my simple response. To his question, he said that's the main burning question he had for me. Alan, if I'm so, if I'm so fucked up, why did you allow me to promote my books? Because the, the real simple answer would be for that year and a half that I did basically give him the blessing to promote my books, he didn't seem as fucked up to me as he does now. <laughs> that's a simple response. He didn't seem as fucked up to me as he does now. Matter of fact, I would say even at the time we fell out, he didn't seem as fucked up to me. Here's when I really, really just like lost it with the Grim Reaper. It wasn't actually in early June, which is when we, when I disassociated him from me business-wise. But it's when he did that video called Sexual Subordination, the one where he talked about he wanted to see black women die in their own pool of blood and choke on their own excrement and all that shit. That's when I, that's when he just lost me. That's when he completely lost. That's when I was like, I will never associate with this dude again. When he did that video, that's when I was like, okay, that dude's crazy. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you straight up. And again, I talked about opinions. That's my opinion. I'm not saying that as a fact. Because one thing I like is when people express opinions as if they're facts. That's a major pet peeve of mine that I've mentioned before. I hate people who express opinions as if they're facts. Here would be a quick example. If you say Michael Jordan won six NBA championships and six NBA finals MVPs, that's a fact. You cannot refute that. That's what a fact is. A fact is something that cannot be disagreed with, cannot be debated, cannot be refuted. Remember that. That's what a fact is. A fact is anything someone says about themselves, about other people that cannot be debated, in any way, shape, or form, cannot be disagreed with in any way, shape, or form, or cannot be refuted in any way. For example, if I say my name is Alan Roger Curry, can anybody debate that? Can anybody refute that? Can anybody disagree with that? If I say I was born and raised in Gary, Indiana, can anybody refute that? Can anybody debate that? If I say I'm 55 years old, can anybody refute that? Can anybody debate that? If I say I have Four paperbacks and four audiobooks. Can anybody refute that? If I say my career is a book author, dating coach, BDSM, consultant and advisor, and podcaster, can anybody refute that? If I say that the Negro Manosphere voted me as 2017 Dating Coach of the Year, 2017 Freelance Writer and Columnist of the Year, and black male YouTube personality of the year. Can anybody refute that? Yeah, I'm, I'm rubbing some balls with that last one. Can anybody refute that? Can anybody debate that? Disagree with that? I got the plaques on my wall. I got the, the re as Big Mike of Mac City would call it, the receipts. I got the receipts on my wall. I'm not going to put the camera on them, but yeah, I got three plaques. Actually, I got four plaques. I got another plaque that's an Editor's Choice Award. That O'Shea Duke Jackson sent me. Much love and respect to O'Shea Duke Jackson. But anyway, yeah. That's a, f a fact is something you that absolutely positively cannot be debated, disagree with, or refuted. If you can debate something in any kind of way, 
disagree with it to any degree and refute it in any kind of way, then it's not a fact. That's an opinion. And going back to Michael Jordan, if somebody says Michael Jordan, oh, he he's hands down the greatest NBA player that ever lived. See, that would be an example of somebody expressing an opinion as if it's a fact. If you were to say, oh, man, everybody knows Michael Jordan is the greatest NBA player that ever lived. Who, who can argue with that? Everybody knows that. No, that's not true. That's not a fact. That, that's you expressing an opinion as if it's a fact. As if it's a fact. Grim Reaper has a bad habit of doing it. I ain't going to say he does it all the time, but he has a bad habit of doing it. And there's a lot of people who have a bad habit of doing that. I've probably done it maybe 1% or 2% of the time. So I won't deny that I've never, ever done it. I've done it probably at least 1% or 2% of the time, expressed certain opinions as if they were facts. But yeah, man, that, that's the difference between opinion and a fact. A, a fact is something that just cannot be refuted, cannot be debated, cannot be disagreed with. But anyway, I was saying, in my opinion, when he did that video called Sexual Subordination, in my opinion, that's when I perceived him as being off, as being flat out, just basically, cray, as they call it, cray cray, crazy. Because remember I said, one of the things that he was appealing to me, why I didn't, why I learned him to promote my books, was because he never did a podcasts, in my opinion, that were highly emotional, that were full of a lot of anger, hatred, Bitterness, antagonism, all that shit. His shit was very matter of fact. But man, that sexual subordination video, man, he sounded like he wanted to kill a motherfucker. I mean, that's my opinion. He sounded like he wanted to kill somebody in that video. Particularly, I would say black women. He sounded like he, he literally wanted to go out with a rifle and just start shooting up black women. That's how he sounded in that video. He didn't say that, but that's how he sounded. He sounded like a man who was so angry with black women that he just wanted to go out and just shoot them up. So there you go. So Grim Reaper, I know you're listening. I know you're listening. You wanted me to answer that question. I answered the question. That's why I allowed you to promote my books. Because between roughly late October of 2015 and the early part of 2017, you didn't really do anything that really in a major way, in a major way, rubbed me the wrong way. There might have been stuff you did in a minor, on a minor level that might have rubbed me the wrong way here and there. But in a major way, you, you didn't do anything that rubbed me the wrong way. And again, the other thing was you was offering me free advertising, free marketing of my books, if, if only two of them. I ain't gonna, the only time I'm going to turn down free marketing and free advertising is if a motherfucker's a member of the Ku Klux Klan, a motherfucker's a convicted rapist or date rapist, or a motherfucker's a convicted murderer or has some other heinous felony conviction on his criminal record. But other than that, I'm going to always let a motherfucker promote my books for free. Shoot, if a motherfucker's going to promote my books and market my books for free, I'm going to allow them to do that to the point where they say something or do something to rub me the wrong way in a major way. Here's my final thing on, on me and the Grim Reaper's beef. And as he said, he said he wants to leave me alone. Last night was his final chapter about me. So I'm going to call this Alan Roger Curry's final chapter about the Grim Reaper. Final chapter. But Grim Reaper, I'm going to just say this, man. If you look at your associations with people, specifically here on YouTube, look how many people you, you used to be cool with that you're not cool with. It ain't just me. A year and a half, two years ago, you was real cool with Ron Wills. Ron Wills don't fuck with you no more. You was real cool with Donovan Sharp. Donovan Sharp don't really fuck with you no more. You was real cool with BGS Edmore. He don't fuck with you no more. You was cool with Angry Man. He don't fuck with you no more. Who else? O'Shea, you and O'Shea used to be cool. I mean, I don't think y'all are at a point where y'all hate each other. Y'all actually do tend to be cordial with each other a lot, you and O'Shea, but y'all ain't cool like y'all was for most of 2016. 
There's a lot of motherfuckers that you used to be cool with on YouTube that you that you're no longer cool with, including myself. I would say at minimum, there's at least five people that you used to that used to call into your blog talk radio show in 2015, 2016, that they 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 at maximum they don't want shit to do with you no more. At maximum, they don't want shit to do with you no more. And at minimum, they might not have hatred towards you, but they don't really go out of their way to really interact with you. Because you're a different dude, man, in my opinion. Again, I'm going to point that out. In my opinion, you're a different dude. To me, the Grim Reaper in 2000, for most of 2017 and 2018, is totally different than the Mumia Obsidian Ali of 2015 and the vast majority of 2016. It's almost like two different dudes. Now, here's where I'm going to segue into something else, and this is this last part of the wrap up this video for today during his expressing all his you know criticisms of me insults of me assessments of my behavior he made two points i found interesting number one it, are most of you familiar with a, a, a pickup artist by the name of eric von markovic eric von markovic that's his real name his his pseudonym is mystery Mystery. Mystery. Back in the late 90s, early 2000s, he was considered the premier pickup artist. Like, almost every other major pickup artist in the world kind of, to one degree or another, borrowed their style from mystery. Now, you know I'm good friends with a dating coach named David X. David X actually used to mentor Mystery. As a matter of fact, I know two people who used to have personal interaction with Mystery. One is David X. David X was a brief mentor to Mystery. Matter of fact, David X told me something interesting about Mystery. He said when Mystery first came to him, he wasn't even good with women. Yeah, he said Mystery told him straight up. This is what David X, I'm telling you what David X said. David X said, Mystery told him, he said, I'm not really good with women romantically or sexually, but I'm a master at attracting women to become my platonic friend. That's what he told David X. He said, I'm not really that good at getting women in bed, getting women to date me, but I'm exceptional at accumulating a high number of female platonic friends. He said he was very platonically popular with women. And that's why he came to David X for advice because he wanted advice on how to actually get women in the bed so he could fuck them. Because he had all these, he had like hundreds of platonic female friends, but he wasn't really fucking them. He wasn't dating them or fucking them. So he wrote a book that sold very well called The Mystery Method, How to Get Beautiful Women Into Your Bed. It did well. It was number one in the category of dating for a long while on Amazon. It was the number one book for a long time. In like the early, two, I'd say from the time he, he published it all the way for the next probably five, ten years. Yeah, it was, it was, if it wasn't number one, it would be in the top five in his category on Amazon, which was dating. Speaking of that, you know your boy Alan Roger Curry has had at least one of his books that was number one in his category. Yeah, my updated version of Mo One, the one called Mo One Whispered Into a Woman's Ear Was Really on Your Mind, which I published in uh, uh, the beginning of April of 2017. Yeah, for like about four or five days, it was actually number one in the category of communication skills. It was number one in the category of communication skills. Um, in late, yeah, I think it was in late late April, early May. Yeah, my book, my updated version of one was number one in this category, communication skills. Um, but yeah, Mystery Man, he was real popular, man. Like I said, almost every major pickup artist out there borrowed a lot of his... I would say... If I'm, the, if I'm the number one person in the manosphere who represents what's known as the direct method of hooking up with women, 
Mystery is the number one person who represents the indirect method of looking at women. Those are the main two factions in the attraction and seduction community. The main two factions in the attraction and seduction community is the direct faction and the indirect faction. Now, there's even a handful of pickup artists. They, they try to combine both, present a hybrid of both. Like, I give you one person, Sasha Daygame, who actually used to be a protege of mystery. Sasha Daygame is probably one of the few day coaches. He almost promotes both. He doesn't exclusively promote indirect. He doesn't exclusively promote direct. He basically says, argues that they both have their place. He believes sometimes you should be direct and other times you should be indirect. So he doesn't exclusively promote either one, whereas I pretty much exclusively promote direct. And I would say David X does too. David X exclusively promotes direct. Um, but anyway, here's what the Grim Reaper said. Two things he said interesting. Oh, no, before I get to that, I got to call out something the Grim Reaper said. I said I wasn't going to do a bunch of nitpicking on all the things he said in this podcast last night. But I got a nitpick on this. Again, his main criticism of me in his podcast last night was that I tend to go out of my lane a lot. I don't stay specifically in my lane, which should be dating advice for single heterosexual men and stuff to do with my, my four books. And he said something to the fact of Alan Roger Curry know good and well he loves to go out of his lane because his most popular video is, is a video that that doesn't have to do with Mo One or dating advice for men, but it was a video where he's admonishing men for calling out women's bullshit. And I, he didn't say the title of the video, but I know what video he's talking about. He's talking about my video called um, Face to Facts. Um, I did a video called Face to Facts. Women are winning the gender war. Now, he, he tried to suggest that that's my most, um, excuse me while I go into my studio, because I'm going to look at my analytics. Because I, well, I looked at them earlier, but I'm going to look at them again. He's wrong on that. I mean, this is something real minor. This ain't no big deal. But he tried to suggest that Alan Roger Curry gets more views when he goes out of his lane than when he stays in his lane. That's not true. That's not true. And for, for starters, that wasn't my number one video. That video called Face to Facts Women and Women, that's not my most viewed video. That video had my most comments. So that's probably why he got it mixed up. That video has my most comments. When it comes to comments and reply comments in my comment section, yes, that video had, does have my most comments. The video called Face to Facts Women Are Winning the Gender War where I talked about a few things in that video, but the main thing, I admonish men for always whining and bitching about women's behavior in that video. Yeah, that video provoked more comments and reply comments than any other video. I'm going to look at it now in my analytics on my YouTube page. Because it tells me how many views I have for each video and how many views and how many comments I have for each video. One second. One second. Damn it, now I can't find it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, that was, that was published. It's still a public video. It's not a Patreon exclusive video. It's still a public video. I published that on October 24th of 2017. That video, views-wise, it has 19,511 views as of today. It has 19,511 views and it has 744 comments and reply comments, which is the most of any video I've done. Yeah, that's, it has the most comments and reply comments of any video I've done. Uh, right behind it would be a video I did that's not free anymore. It's now a Patreon exclusive video called um, The Myth of the Prudish and Monogamy-Oriented Good Girl. 
the myth of the prudish and monogamy oriented good girl. Let me look that one up real quick. That had the second most comments and reply comments of any video I did. But that's that's not free anymore. That's now a Patreon exclusive video. Okay. Yeah, the myth of the prudish, the monogamy orange good girl had twenty thousand. 703 views and um, 374 comments and reply comments. 374 comments and reply comments. Actually, I saw another video that had more than that. So, no, actually, that's not my second. Now, there's another video because I passed another video that has over 400. Actually, uh, no, actually, no, Myth of the Prudish, I'll take that back. Myth of the Prudish in Monami Orient is not second place in terms of comments and reply comments. Second place is my video I did on November 1st of 2017, which is still public. It's called The Public Frustrations of Delusional Men Who Can't Get Laid. The Public Frustrations of Delusional Men Who Can't Get Laid. That's my second most video in terms of comments and reply comments. It has 452. 452 comments and reply comments. Now, in terms of just straight views, again, the Grim Reaper said that the video I did face the facts, women and women in general, was my most viewed video. No, no, he was wrong. And I'll excuse him for that. You know, maybe he got it mixed up. But because it was, it is my number one video in terms of comments, how many comments or reply comments before. But in terms of pure views, it's actually a video I did not that long ago. My number one video in terms of views was uh, a video I did. It was actually in response to, I mentioned alpha male strategies at the beginning of this video when I was talking about my hair. It was a video I did that was essentially a response video to alpha male strategies. It was called the number one weakness of pretending to want to be a woman's long-term boyfriend when you know deep down you just want casual sex. That's my most viewed video. Not only is that my most viewed video this year in 2018, but according to my analytics, that's my most viewed video, period. I actually thought there was one or two videos in 2017 that had more views, but maybe they, my views, sometimes my views fluctuate, man. Like I remember I had one video that had over 40,000 views and then about a month or a month and a half later, it went down to 30,000 views. So see, sometimes these views be going up and down, man. Yeah, I had one video, it had over 40,000 views that I did in 2017. And then about four to six weeks later, it went down to about 40, uh, about 30,000 views. Um, but yeah, as of today, my most viewed video, again, is the video I did on March 14th. Of, of this year, March 14th of this year, it's called the number one weakness of pretending to want to be a woman's long-term boyfriend when deep down you really just want casual sex. Second one was a video I just did recently. My second most viewed video is the video called Hit Dogs Always Holler and Alan's upcoming three-week July YouTube hiatus. Speaking of that, yeah. Again, beginning with July 10th, I won't be doing any more free videos for the rest of the month. The last video I will do, free video I'll do, will, if any, will be Monday. And that's not even guaranteed. This might be my last video. But if I do if I do one more video, I might do one more video on Monday. But after that, you won't hear you won't see any free videos from me for the rest of July. But yeah, the video that called Hit Dogs that has 33,554 views. My third most viewed video is a video I did back in April of last year called Beta Males Do Not Understand the True Sexual Nature of Women. That was uh, That's now a Patreon exclusive video. 
that has 32,865 views. Fourth is a video I did just this year called Why Is It Necessary to Verbalize Your Sexual Desires, Interests, and Intentions to Women? I did that on June 7th. That has 31,000 views, 31,455 views. And finally, um, my fifth most video is a video I did back in August of last year that's no longer free. It's a Patreon exclusive video. It's called MGTOW Men versus Hardline Alpha Males versus in Eternal Confirmed Bachelors. Yeah, that's that's my fifth most viewed video. Anyway, I went off on a long segue. Going back to Mystery Method and the Grim Reaper's assessment of Mystery Method. So yeah, Mystery Method is the prototypical indirect guy. Here's the, the essence of his... Remember I talked about this five... There's only really five ways to get a woman in bed. You've always heard me say that. There's only five ways to get a woman in bed. Once again, that is attraction, seduction, dishonesty and manipulation, financial negotiation, and coercion. Those are the five general, every method of getting a woman in bed is going to fall under one of those five categories, or in some cases, maybe a blend of two of the five categories. But uh, like mole one, I consider mole one a, a blend of attraction and seduction. Attraction and seduction. But those are the five general ways is attraction, seduction, dishonesty, and manipulation. Financial negotiation and coercion. Mystery, if I was to assess the mystery method, it's a combination of attraction and dishonesty and manipulation. Attraction and dishonesty and manipulation. Now, if you were to listen to him, he would tell you it's a combination of attraction and seduction. But he doesn't really preach seduction. He, what he basically, in a nutshell, preaches, and this is what a lot of pickup artists promote, and this relates to my number one most viewed video. The one I said is my number one video called The Number One Weakness of Pretending. This is what a lot of indirect guys believe. They believe the best way to get a woman in bed is to give a woman the misleading impression that you want to be her long-term boyfriend. But then once you get the pussy one time, two times, five times, ten times, you create a reason to just dump her, cut things off with her, and then move on to the next woman. And then you repeat the same cycle with a new woman. That's what most indirect guys believe in. Yeah, they believe you should meet a woman, develop, like Mystery believes in developing rapport with women, engaging, building rapport, and engaging, engaging in what he calls comfort talk, pretending like you're developing an emotional attachment to a woman, basically toying with a woman's emotions. Basically, you lead a woman on to believe, again, that you want to be her next long-term exclusive lover or boyfriend but then once you get the pussy a few times you just dump the bitch see I don't believe in that shit man I don't believe in that shit <laughs> you know my mom one I believe in being just up my attitude is if you want short term non-monogamous casual sex for a woman then you need to have the balls and backbone to just straightforwardly tell a woman that now going back to Grim Reaper he believes he basically said he believes the mystery method is more effective than mom one he said he believes lying to women and misleading women will get you more pussy than Mo one. Here's what I would say to that. I'm not going to give a total disagreement to that, and I'm not going to give a total agreement. I would say it depends on the guy. I would say it depends on the guy. With some guys, some guys, I actually would agree with the Grim Reaper. So, yeah. With some guys, I would actually agree with the Grim Reaper. Remember what I talked about when I said, see, here's what you got to understand about women. They're similar to men. Women know the guys that they just want to fuck. 90 to 90% of the time, 90 to 99% of the time, women know the guys who they just want to fuck versus the guys who they want to be in a relationship with. Just like I would say most men. Most men are the same way. We know the women who we just want to fuck versus the women who we want as a long-term girlfriend or a potential wife. Women are no different. Trust me. Trust me when I say that. Women are no different. 
They have guys in this. I remember I did that video called Fuck Buddy Material versus Boyfriend Material versus Platonic Friend Material. I talked about it in that video. Women know the guys who they just want to fuck. See, here's the difference between seduction, which is what I emphasize in dishonesty and manipulation, which is what a lot of indirect guys. I believe that if you meet a woman whose first preference is to only engage in sex with you within the context of a long-term boyfriend-girlfriend type relationship, if you have very persuasive verbal seduction skills, very charming, persuasive, charismatic verbal seduction skills, you can persuade a woman to say, okay, I, my preference was to only engage in sex with you if you're my boyfriend, but I'm willing to go ahead and have casual sex with you. See, that's what I believe in doing. That's what seduction is. Seduction centers around persuasion. Persuading someone to choose the option you prefer instead of the option that they prefer. It's like selling a car. It's like say someone comes in and says they want a sedan, but you want to sell them on a, a coupe or a convertible. That's persuasion. Persuasion is when you persuade someone to choose the option you prefer instead of the option that they prefer, which is far different from dishonesty and manipulation. Dishonesty and manipulation is basically when you say to a woman, give a woman a misleading impression that you want to be her long-term boyfriend because you know that's what she wants. But then once you get the pussy, you just dump her. See, I, I ain't down with that shit, man. Again, I know there's a lot of guys who are down with that shit, but I'm not down with that shit. Even alpha male, that's why me and alpha male strategies don't see eye to eye. I mean, I respect alpha male strategies, you know, continue success to them. But that's the, the biggest area where he and I disagree. He, he believes in dishonesty and manipulation. I don't believe in that shit, man. I don't believe in toying with women's emotions and, and just blatantly lying to a woman just to get some pussy. I call that being a end justifies the means guy. An end justifies the means guy. I'm not an end justifies the means guy. No. And that's why I always say, man, more one ain't for everybody. I've said that a million times. More one ain't for all guys. More one, that's what that's one of the things that more one is for. More one is for guys who are not willing to resort to lying to women, misleading women, and manipulating their emotions in order to get them in bed. Now, if you're that type of guy, then Mo One is not for you. It's just that simple. Mo One is not for you. Mo One is only for guys who are not willing to resort to lying like me. I'm not willing to resort to that to get a woman in bed. I'd rather not get pussy at all. And I've said this a million times. I'd rather literally not get pussy at all than get some pussy as a result of lying to a woman, misleading a woman, and toying with her emotions. I told y'all at least one extreme case. I know at least one guy. He was a friend of my cousin. He got shot in the head for doing that shit with a woman. Now, I'm not even making that up. I, there was a friend of my older I have an older cousin. He said he had a friend who, who a woman came to his crib and shot him in the head because he was toying with her emotions. See, man, I ain't, I ain't trying to toy with no emotions, woman's emotions like that. But he, so that's one thing he said. Uh, but here's the, here's the other thing he said. So one thing the Grim Reaper said about mystery, he said he feels like essentially indirect is more effective than the direct method. Again, my response to that would be I would almost give him a half yes, half no answer. I would say it depends on the guy. Some guys, yeah, that's the only way they're going to get casual sex pussy from women is by lying to them. I'll just be real about that. There are some guys, yeah. Mainly, here's another one, guys, who I would say that is probably more beneficial to them than a lot of women. Plain and simply, it's guys who have weak, a weak personality, and in other words, a less than average degree of confidence, less than average degree of charisma, less than average degree of persuasive charm, and just what I would generally say, poor verbal seduction skills. If you have poor verbal seduction skills, that's when I would argue that you better off lying to women to get them in bed. If you have less than average verbal seduction skills and persuasive charm, yeah, I would go ahead and say, I would concede that guys in that category, you're better off lying to women to try to get casual sex from them. You ain't, you, you ain't gonna get no casual sex from women by being straightforwardly honest. 
But if you're a guy who's charming, charismatic, have a high degree of what I call persuasive and seductive charm, you have above average to exceptional verbal seduction skills, you don't need a lot of women. I'm here to tell you, I'm a living testimony of that. You don't need a lot of women to get ca get them to have casual sex with you. I've never had to lie to a woman to, get, to motivate them to agree to have casual sex with me. Never. If I did do it, I think the last time I did that was maybe when I was maybe like 18, 19, 20. But starting with the age of 21, no later than the age of 22, up until now, I ain't never had to lie to a woman to get her to have casual sex with me. And I've had casual sex with hundreds of women. Hundreds. So, it's all about your verbal seduction skills. Again, the, 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 the less, the lower, the more poor quality your verbal seduction skills are, the more it's probably a benefit to you to lie to women, mislead women, and manipulate them in order to get them to have casual sex with you. But if you've got exceptional, above average to exceptional verbal seduction skills, you don't need to do that shit. You don't need to do that shit. And then the final thing the Grim Reaper said, and this was a flat out lie. And this is why it's hard for me to resist not responding to him because he says so many things that's just a flat out lie. He said that Eric Von Markovic, aka Mystery, guarantees men, his dating coaching clients, that they will uh, be able, if they take his advice, they'll be able to get women in bed, women who are eights, nines, and tens in bed on a regular basis, or at least a semi-regular basis. Insert dog face here. Alan Roger Curry is here to tell you, man, there is no dating coach on in society. I will stake my name on this. There is no dating coach or pickup artist, seduction guru in society that can guarantee each and every one of their clients that they can get them in bed uh, get them to have sex with eights, nines, and tens on a regular, semi-regular basis. Why do you think PUA Hate was started? For those of you familiar with that old website called PUA Hate, why do you literally think PUA Hate was started? That's literally 90% of the reason why that, that message board began. The message board called PUA Hate. Elliot Roger ended up killing that message board. That's when it got deleted because of Elliot Roger because he was a member of that message board. But that's why you had PUA Hate. Because you had all these pickup artists who had offered these guarantees to men. They basically told these men, if you follow my advice, you're guaranteed to get a real beautiful girlfriend. Or you're guaranteed to have casual sex with be nothing but beautiful women. Guess what? For over half of those guys' clients, the shit didn't happen. And when a lot of those guys wanted their money back, those PUAs would come up with reasons not to give them their money back, or they would only give them maybe 50% of their money back. And that's literally, that's literally the main reason why PUA hate was started. Is because you had all these PUAs offering all these guarantees that if you follow my advice, you're guaranteed to get nothing but eights, nines, and tens in your bed, and they couldn't deliver on that promise. And a lot of them even had so-called money-back guarantees that they said, if I if I don't deliver, I'll give you all your money back. But again, some PUAs wouldn't give them any of their money back, and other PUAs would only give them maybe one-third to one-half their money back. And that's why I always tell guys, man, I don't offer no guarantees, man. When I do my one-on-one face-to-face coaching sessions and my Skype and telephone consultation sessions, I never guarantee men that if they follow my advice that they're guaranteed to have their next girlfriend be an 8, 9, or 10, or the next few casual sex lovers that they have are going to be. Because my attitude is this. If a guy comes to me, and he's 450 pounds with five teeth in his mouth, and he says, Alan, I want you to help me. I want you to help me get better with women. Now, I have to confess, I only take, I only take a bath once a week, and only have five teeth in my mouth, but I want to be really, really good with women. Please help me be good with women. Now, do you think I'll be able to 
offer a motherfucker like that a guarantee that if he, he listens to all four of my audio books, that he's going to be pulling eights, nines, and tens? Come on, man. One, one thing I always tell people, man, I don't, I, don't, I don't feed into people's delusions. That would be representative of feeding into people's delusions, man. Have I had some men that after taking my advice have improved both the quality and or the quantity of their sex partners? I sure have. I got email testimonials to prove it. I even have a few audio testimonials to prove it. So, yes, I have. But do I guarantee? Do I guarantee that if you follow my advice, you're guaranteed to improve the quality and or quantity of your sex partners? No. No. I never, I'm, I never have offered any guarantees like that, and I never will, because it depends on the guy. Hey, what's going on, Alan? I just want to shoot this video because, honestly, man, you've changed everything in my life. For real. Oh. Man, I've had so many things that's happened in the past few weeks since we had our little uh, BDSM. Uh, consultation and uh, man I got my, my girl she's a completely different woman 180 degrees she accepts you know multiple women she accepts the fact that you know, you know I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do and that's just the way that it is uh, uh, man I've I've met a few different women and instantly mode one hundred percent mode one I want to fuck that pussy. I want to grab that ass. I want you to suck my dick. I mean, I'm not bragging, man, but literally, I, I had a 60-second interaction with the woman, and my dick was literally in her mouth within 60 seconds. Old friend from high school see me out. Cornelius, hey, man, I haven't seen you in so long. I said, yeah. I've been wanting to slide my dick in that mouth ever since high school. She looked at me. Man, man, I got I got three different stories from the Mo One approach. Man, it's gold. I just wanted to say thank you. From the bottom of my heart, man, you've really changed things. Being real, authentic, and speaking from the heart. say enough about it. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'll be speaking with you soon. I possibly can't. Anything beyond this point would just be me repeat myself. Just like anything he would say from beyond this point would be him repeating himself. So, I'm going to call this me and the Grim Reaper's official truce. Again, if he's a man of his word, I'm going to call this our official truce. I'm If he's truly done with me, I'm done with him. Because I don't think there's any new criticism he could ever come up with me. I, I, I've told you guys many times, I ain't changed. Matter of fact, I've issued that challenge not once, not twice, but three times. I've issued that challenge. I said, prove that I've changed in the last year, the last two years, and the last three years. I'm the same Alan Roger Curry in 2018 that I was in 2017. In 2017, I was the same Alan Roger Curry that I was in 2016. In 2016, I was the same Alan Roger Curry that I was in 2015. I dare anybody to say that I've changed since I get... Some guys have tried to say I've changed since I've come to YouTube. And I always ask them, prove it in spe with specific detail. Prove how I've changed. I'm the same guy. I ain't no different than the, than the Alan Roger Curry you listen to on... Um, uh, again, if I had to point out one, some guys say, well, Alan, since he come on YouTube, he, he harshly admonishes men more than he does women. I always have. If anybody's been a long time following man, I always have. I've always been more critical of men's behavior than I have women's behavior. Even though I do criticize women's behavior too. And all you got to do is read my book, The Possibility of Sex. I criticize women's behavior and the possibility of sex. The only difference between me and the Grim Reaper, I do at times highlight what most people call female fuckery. I just don't limit it to black women. That's my only thing. It ain't that I, I never, ever highlight female fuckery. Again, if you read The Possibility of Sex, I, ha I highlight various aspects of female fuckery. The only difference is I don't limit it specifically to black women. And that's what I have an issue with. I don't really necessarily have an issue with men 
who from time to time highlight women's fuckery, period. I just don't like seeing people, black men, limiting it to black women. Because I, I, the truth is, all women have their own brand of fuckery. White women have their own brand of fuckery. Asian women have their own brand of fuckery. Hispanic women have their own brand of fuckery. Every Middle Eastern woman had their own brand of fuckery. All women had their own brand of fuckery. Alan Roger Curry ain't changed. Believe that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> <sighs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. <laughs> Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my king. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. Oh. You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. the king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How seductive your intonations are, the vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice, how you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Kerr. Alan Roger Curry, the king. The king. The king.